So since returning from Norfolk a couple of weeks ago, I haven't had much of an opportunity to get too far outside of York for one of these videos because I've been stuck in on weekends preparing some lectures for a couple of conferences I'm doing in October. And also I've been leading a couple of walking tours of York's medieval parish churches, which a lot of people on Instagram and Twitter came along. Uh, that was on the 12th and the 19th of August. Really good turnout. We had a great day on both of those occasions. But the main thing is that I'm in the process of trying to buy a house at the moment and going through conveyancing. Uh, it's a property in York, so I'll still be here, but a lot of my energy has been going into that and not these videos. But this is another walk in York. It's Heslington to Fulford, and I'm following this little map, which is one of a series of little walking routes covered in some guides that were produced by the City of York Council. And I picked up these and a wad of other ones uh, at the library in New Earswick, which is not too far from where I live. So I actually have done a lot of this walk earlier in the year on the on New Year's Day, actually, that was it. Yeah, because it goes over a golf course. And I remember that golf course being completely closed so you could walk all the way across it. The only day a year when you could do it. We're not going to be able to do that today because it's a Saturday and it will probably be quite busy. It's about half past ten at the moment. But we'll follow the route of the walk and you can see what we explore on the way. Brought my camera with me too. Found a new camera. Not got one, not bought one, but found one. Well, this is the camera. It's my partner's old Fujifilm X100. Found it in the loft, would you believe? Uh, it's one of the original of the series from 2011, 2012, something like that. It's a great camera. I've taken it out a couple of times already this week. Had a good play around with it. And we'll see what we can shoot on it today. So the guide actually tells you to start over here in the village of Fulford itself, but I've done this before, so I'm actually gonna start up at number nine. Uh, so I've just walked through the University of York campus and then we're going to be going down all the way over here over the um, A64 and then returning back into Fulford where <clears throat> ultimately I want to go and have a look and show you some of the fantastic stained glass in St Oswald's Church. So let's crack on over the motorway. The guide says the route is about 6.5 miles long in total and takes two to three hours. For me, dawdling around, it'll probably be three and a half. Maybe we'll fit a pub in at the end. I haven't shown many York pubs on this account and it's something that I have been wanting to do, I guess. Yeah, we'll do that, see where we end up. So you actually have to leave the university campus through Halifax College, which is right on the northern, sort of northeast fringe of the entire campus. Sort of not, not even in Heslington, really. It just doesn't feel like part of the university. In fact, I often wonder if all of it actually is for students. I, I doubt it is. But then you eventually come out into this car park, which borders onto a, a, a patch of land called the Outgang. And it's a part of a football pitch sponsored by the FA or something and then you can follow the public bridle way way marker out towards the A64. In a way it's quite nice for me to be able to just do these local walks in York. I hope you all enjoy watching them but it will come around to some videos that I have been talking about for a while which I haven't made yet although I have started research for one of them. Uh, those are a long format video of a tour around York City walls in its entirety, and also um, the bridges of the River Ouse and the River Foss, which would probably be a series of videos which I put into separate playlists. So if any of those interest you, do let me know which one you'd prefer. Hopefully I can make a start on them still while, the, uh, while we transition from summer into autumn. Um, but no promises there. But yeah, let me know which one you'd be interested to see first. I'll get around to both eventually. So now we're going to be skirting westwards 
alongside the A64 there where you can see the sun reflecting off the windscreens of some of the cars speeding past and you can definitely hear it but in these farmers fields recently harvest here are the remains of the harvest all that's left and yeah eventually when we get over there we'll get to the Heslington Tillmire which is a wildlife reserve now it's actually a very ancient piece of land uh, a bit further out than the golf course which was uh, put there in 1935 I believe where I'm stood now it's become apparent to me I'm, it's a hub of connectivity. The A64 is just there. Uh, you can probably hear the traffic again. Behind me is this perfectly placed pylon on the junction between the access road to the end of the outgang, which I've just come from, and this access road to the 1930s golf course on the other side of the motorway. But the connectivity here is just non-stop. People traveling at high speed on the motorway, high speed connectivity right above me. This is all themes that are covered in a lot of literature I've been reading recently. So Gareth Rees's book, Unofficial Britain, discusses the worship of pylons uh, in 20th and 21st century art and literature. It also discusses how we interpret the landscape and man-made features in the landscape. You know, these are standing fields and areas which are already well influenced by human activity and have been for centuries. So really interesting concepts that I'm really becoming aware of and um, sticking at the forefront of my mind when I go on these urban walks because urban walks are something that I'm finding a lot of fascinating twists and turns and features in pylons. Just one of those things really. So that was really great to see that. And of course, funny, I suppose that there is a way marker there telling you which way to go underneath this great big modern monolith. Anyway, we're going over the A64 now, and then skirt along the, go the golf course into Fulford. In fact, thinking about modern structures in the landscape, it reminds me that a couple of weeks ago, I got this secondhand book in a charity shop in Harrogate called Images of Change. And I think it was produced by Historic England or English Heritage, probably back when, a few years ago, when they were one of the same thing or whatever it was. But, um, it's all about how the built environment has changed over time, even way back to when the canal system was rolled out across uh, England and Wales in particular. But um, it goes all the way up to the modern day and talks about what, you know, 20th century buildings and structures, industrial estates, but how we adapt with those structures in the 21st century and how we navigate the built environment with all these abandoned loan structures still in use, repurposed, reused, and how we live around them. And I think this is a theme that I'm going to look at in York, a city which I live in obviously, but which is usually only the focus of medieval history and Roman history. But I think there's much more to explore in York. So that's gonna be a theme of future videos as well. Just another reflection on pylons whilst I munch my way through a peanut butter roll is that they're connected in lines, aren't they? So, reminds me of a similar way that sacred sites are. I think about Thornborough Henge and some of those lesser known sites around there. Avebury for some of you southern folk. Um, yeah, definitely parallels connectivity again. I don't know, something in it. These are some of my favourite paths at this time of year, just after the harvest, with the footpath going horizontally, well, diagonally, I suppose, directly through a field. Doing this at Copgrove uh, on a video, which I'll link earlier in the year, the crops were up above head height. This is perfect though. I love it. Something really special about being in such an expansive field. All the crop taken away in a matter of days on the footpath, the faintest impression of which still can be traced. And you can just follow your steps right across it. Well, follow other people's steps. So on the map, we came into the golf course via 
points 11 and 12 there and we actually skirted the A64, that big white line going horizontal across to number 18 where we're going to cross back and go towards Germany, Beck and Fulford. Here we go, back over the A64 again. Never normally any road traffic on this bridge going over it, just dog walkers. No, no one today. And there you go, that's towards Tadcaster that way and Leeds. And then I guess that way is Hull, Selby, Scarborough eventually, Moulton, Thirsk. But this way is York. Now we'll just rejoin the main road that goes directly through Fulford into the city centre and look at some of the interesting townhouses on either side of the road, then we'll get to the church. So this is St Oswald's Church in Fulford. It's always open. It was built in 1866 by James Piggott Pritchett Jr. It is a huge Gothic revival church, very typical of its time. It was only open for 10 years before it burnt down and had to be partially rebuilt by the same architect and artisans who were working here in the 1860s. It has wonderful stained glass in the aisles, as I've alluded to already. Some of them are stained, some of them are clear glazed, but as we walk around, we'll look at some of them in a little bit more detail. This is the Palms Memorial window at the west end of the North Isle. It commemorates Guy Roger Palms, who died in 1901, depicts St George, St John the Baptist, and Archangel Michael at the top. A beautiful window doesn't mention who the glazier is. I'm sure we'll find out in one or another of these walk around guides. Interesting here, this is the old church which does still exist in Fulford, but it is now a private residence and it is very difficult to see from the road. But I'll take one of those because I have never seen this guide before. That'll be the subject of another video around Fulford, I think. Great window there, very, very colourful. And as we move further down the North Isle, there is this window here by the same glazier as the Palms Memorial window. This window is called the Jackson Memorial window. Uh, it's very similar age to the uh, Palm, Palms one we just saw. And this is a scene of the Epiphany, I can see in the centre. Uh, actually, the whole thing is, of course. But yeah, very, very nicely coloured and well designed. I think these are really, really pleasant windows. I cannot see a glazier mark or name in the usual places. I'm sure if I get home and look at my Pevsner's guide it will tell me. And look at that detail. Fantastic. So the east window glass says, In loving memory of Samuel Key, incumbent and patron of this benefice from 1869 to the 5th of October 1863, also of Charles, his son, lieutenant in the Indian Army, 9th of September 1866. I didn't film down Fulford Road heading back to the city centre because the traffic is so busy and there isn't really much to see there apart from the medieval Market Cross outside Lidl, uh, Aldi, one of the two, which is a wonderful survival really, the Fulford Cross. So I thought I'd show you that, hope you enjoyed it. But now I'm coming down Hospital Fields Road to get to the River Ouse. And then we're just going to meander back into the city centre and go and get a drink somewhere. So I'll see you at the pub.